This video is presented by Sailrite. I'm going to be redoing this uh, foam uh, cushion that goes on a power boat. And as you can see, we have a flat section of foam coming up to a, a rolled section of foam that has basically been se separated so that we can insert a fabric liner here and pull the seam down into the, uh, the board and then staple it down. Uh, what we want to do is we want to cut a top piece of fabric the same shape as the uh, top of this then we're going to also create another color for this rolled section of foam here so we'll have two different colors one that'll be uh, this exact shape of the plate plus this plus a little bit extra for stapling it under and then we also have another piece of fabric that goes around this that'll be the same shape as this rolled section with some excess over here to staple it on the back side what we need to do for the boxing or the side of the cushion is create a piece of vinyl that is exactly the same width as this with some excess for stapling on the back side. And I've already started to cut that out. Here's my vinyl and what we want to do is lay it on top. And you can see I have quite a bit of excess for rolling under and stapling, which is which is nice to have because you don't want to not have enough fabric for rolling. What what I'll do here is I have a gradual, can you see this in the picture? I have a gradual curve here that you can tell that the edge is right flush. And we're actually going to put some piping in here, which will shrink this down a little bit because you want a fairly nice tight cushion. But uh, you can see this edge here, that's going to look great with piping on. And this I want basically flush with the top of the cushion, and then I want it to come up here and be flush up here. With this curve here, since I'm going to be inserting some uh, vinyl here to actually staple it to the board down here through that crack, what I want to do is I want to make sure that that curve is, when it gets pulled down, doesn't have any rear wrinkles. So I'm actually going to cut this down a little bit. I, I think there's a little bit too much of a curve there. So I'll take my marker, once I have everything in position, everything's flush, and I'm actually going to just mark a little bit here to tell me what kind of curve to make, and I'm going to kind of do this by eye a little bit. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is make this a gradual curve here, which I think will make it come out a lot nicer. I'm just going to kind of roughly do this so that it'll get a nice shape so it's easy for sewing the piping on. a little bit of a tighter turn, which I think will come out a little bit nicer. Okay, we'll do that for this side, this boxing. We'll do that for over here on this side. We'll cut a plate here that's the same size as the foam top, plus the edge, plus some extra for, for uh, stapling to the board. We're going to take another color from here all the way around, including the side, and enough for stapling to the board. And we'll sew some piping around the edges here, and we'll dress it up really nice. So this is the vinyl material, and this is the inside of the material. This is the top of my foam. And if you remember, this is the edge that we have to wrap around. You can see I have plenty of material, plus about two inches to wrap around the board and staple it. Now this edge over here, this is where the actual uh, fabric will stop, so I'm not going to have a wrap here. I'm actually going to create another piece of material to pull that into the material. So I've got this side lined up perfectly. It's exactly even with the foam and the piping will actually pull it in a little bit and that's what we want. We want it to be fairly tight. We don't want it too loose. So if you look up here it's exactly the match. Now I'm going to just take my pencil, mark there for that side, and then mark down this side. Now down here, over here, I'm just going to kind of continue on and that line is right up with that and that's even with up top so that should be perfect. Now this is a Naugahyde Universal material and it can just easily be cut with scissors. There's the top of the cushion, this turned around. So, and that side's even. This side will be right on top like that. And this side will wrap around and staple to the board. This is the opposite color vinyl. And I 
I've got it again facing down. And this is the rolled foam that we have at the top of our cushion. And this is the side that is facing out. This is the side that will butt up with the other piece of foam. The other piece of foam will attach just about like that. And it's okay to have a little bit of extra here. And we definitely will have some extra because it's actually going to be wrapped around and then pulled over the board like this. So, so we don't need it to wrap all the way up here. We just need it to meet that other piece of fabric here. And we'll determine that later on in the steps. But I need to match up this side. This is what we did at the top. So it's nice and flush here. We have plenty of excess here. And then I'm going to have it cut. Right here. And I'm going to roll this foam around to determine how long this will be. And we need to include extra for, for our wrap. So right, right about there is definitely long enough because here's the end edge of the foam and this will be right where we cut it across. I'm going to complete this line straight across. So here's our foam again and here's what it cut out and we just want to verify that we're not going to have too much excess on the sides. So the piping will come over here and it'll, the piping will take up a little bit of this fabric so the piping will actually lay right about here and take up about a quarter inch of the fabric which will be about perfect. And this is where the two pieces will meet and will meet right about here with a seam or a piping, whichever way you want to do it. I, I, I haven't decided for sure. And then you can see it wraps around and we'll staple it to the back side and we have plenty of material to do that with as well. Now you want these to be exactly the same and if you've done it right they, they would be, but mine's a little bit on the big side as far as the uh, reddish color, the, this cinnabar I think they call it. So I'm going to trim off about a quarter inch here just to make sure that it's nice and even with the other one because that's where they will join together and the piping will continue. So I'm just going to trim off about a quarter inch just to make it the same. Our foam did not have straight lines, so notice there's shape Remember built into the, each one of these edges. a little bit of forgiveness here, because you're going to be installing the piping there, and it's going to pull it nice and tight, and the foam will actually compress fairly well, too. Not only will the foam compress, but this vinyl material, which is Naugahyde Universal, will stretch very nicely as well. Sombrella doesn't stretch as well, but it works well in this application, too. Okay, we have our plates, we have our boxing. Now, I've cut this scrap piece of vinyl out, and it's obviously about a quarter inch or a half inch smaller on the sides here, and the length isn't really crucial. We just want it definitely the thickness of the foam plus some for stapling it down into the board. And we're gonna actually put this whole assembly together. So, what, instead of putting piping across the seam here as the old cushions had, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a uh, basically a top stitch like this. So this is a little sample and I really do suggest doing samples like this just to make sure that you're working everything out right. This will be the white vinyl here, this will be the red color vinyl, and then this will be the uh, the flap that pulls this seam down into the two, between the two layers of foam and is stapled to the board on the inside. So it'll be just like that. And so I did a mock-up of this just to determine that I get the panels exactly right. So what I'm going to do is lay the white on top of the red, like this. I've already sewn this here. And then I want my scrap piece to be on the back of this. So it'll actually go like this. This will go here, like that. And then this panel will be flipped like this. Okay, so you got that. We have the red panel and we have our little flap here. And we'll match up these edges. We'll sew a straight stitch about a quarter inch away or maybe even a half inch away. And then we'll unfold it after we have a straight stitch. And what you'll get is you'll have a fold like this and we'll just sew another stitch right here which is called a top stitch. And we're going to sew the top stitch to the white piece instead of the red. You can do it either way if you want. But that's how we're going to do it. A good way to keep the panels together while you're sewing them is actually, you can see this one piece is actually in a little bit from the edge, but that's what we want, as we talked about earlier. But a good way to keep everything together uh, for your sewing is to actually take a stapler and staple in, staple them together 
and that way you know that nothing's going to move on you. You don't have to be concerned about it nearly as much. You can see how our, our panels aren't exactly the shape. That's because this plate is actually a little bit bigger. That's quite alright because we mashed it to the foam. I'm going to sew it so that the staple ends are facing up because the stitch doesn't matter which way you fold it, top or bottom. That way I won't scratch my sewing machine. We're sewing this with the Sayerite Ultrafeed LS1 and sewing machine. Right there, about a quarter inch or so. You could fit masking tape down on your sewing machine to use it as a guide, but uh, technically it really shouldn't be that difficult. And we'll do it the maximum stitch length. No need to reverse because we're actually going to have piping on the sides. hit our staple a little bit with the needle but it didn't cause any issues. Now we'll take this and before we sew it on we're gonna, I'm going to pull out these staples. Okay here's our flap, here's our red for the roll, rolled foam, and here's our plate for the flat piece of foam. Now I'm going to uh, sew in the white area as I explained earlier. Um, and I'm going to make sure that my roll is facing that direction. I'm going to sew into the roll on this edge. So I'm going to make sure that it's pulling that way. And I'm going to stitch into that. And I'm going to position it here. And I'm going to pull this apart as I sew, uh, being careful to uh, keep it along that stitch. So I'm pulling it apart. Keeping my stitch nice and straight, making sure the folds, I'm sewing into the fold and I am, I can feel it on the back side. And there's the bottom edge. You can see that I've stitched into that extra folded material there. Okay, we're going to sew piping along this edge here, all the way down. We won't go all the way to the edge here because that's actually going to wrap around, but I'm going to go pretty close because I definitely want my piping to start wrapping. I don't need to go all the way here, so I'll just be a, about a, an inch or so from the edge. And I'm also going to install it on this side as well. And you obviously want the tail edge of the piping to be uh, uh, right against the edge of your vinyl. To do this, this Alterfeed LS1 sewing machine has a welting foot built right into it. 